This is the United States. All these lines signify the boundaries of each state. There are 50. Today, I'm gonna tell you which ones are the 10 best going into 2024. Like, where should you live? What are your best options? These are the 10 best options. We do this list every year. We rank the states by their stats, crime, economy, real estate, schools, healthcare, and a few other stats, and we see who shakes out to be the best. Between number two and number one, I will give you a few that almost made the list. Everyone asks for that every year. In the comment section, I would love to hear which states you feel are the best and why. A few years back, we did a follow-up video based on your guys' input. All right, we're gonna see who made the top 10 for 2024. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Massachusetts. Massachusetts has dropped on this list quite a bit. Two years ago, they were number three. Here they are at number 10. But it's still a great place to live, from its charming historic towns like Cape Cod to its biggest city, Boston. There is something for everyone in this state. They got some of the best colleges and universities in the country. They have some of the best healthcare and some legendary sports teams, the Boston Red Sox, the Patriots, and the Bruins. It's also a great state if you like a good change in seasons, because they have it. Their fall foliage is amazing, by the way. They also have great seafood. If you like clam chowder or lobster rolls, uh, you know, Boston's probably your best place. That's an opinion. There's a strong argument that you can get better uh, seafood in Rhode Island. So if you're into history, you like great food, you need an education, and you need some good health care, Massachusetts is a good place for you to be. Here's where they rank amongst the other 50 states. For economy, Massachusetts is ranked 13th. For school, they're ranked third in the nation. Healthcare, third in the nation. And crime, 11th. That's not bad. Now, as you go down the list, you're gonna see that their numbers are better than a lot of other states. But some of the other stats that I'm not really talking about on this, they're kind of boring, but they're still factored in. They kind of suck at. Their infrastructure isn't doing great. They're actually ranked 43rd in the nation. And their fiscal stability, meaning how the government is spending things and how the government of the state and let's say cities like Boston, how their future looks, it's not great. They're ranked 44th in the nation. But you put that all together in the number blender we call a calculator and it comes out Massachusetts is number 10. Number nine, Florida. Living in Florida is, you know, not a bad deal for a lot of people. Even though we did a video just recently about how a lot of residents are researching moving to new states, Florida is still gaining population. Actually, it depends on what study you look at. They're always in the top five of the most moved to states. The Sunshine State does live up to its name with an abundance of sunny days that give you plenty of vitamin D, which will affect your mood. You'll probably be a lot happier if you're living in Florida. I mean, the entire state makes you feel like you're on vacation every single day. Florida has more beaches than should be allowed in a polite society society. It's like they overshadow just about every other state. On top of that, they have a severe case of laid back lifestyle. This is another state that has amazing seafood and tons of outdoor activities. Yes, I get it. They have hurricanes occasionally. They do get some pretty good rainstorms, but most of the time that state is sunny and pleasant or sunny and extremely hot. If you like hot weather, this is a really good place to live. Let's look at their stats. For economy, Florida's ranked seventh in the nation. For schools, believe it or not, they are ranked number one. I don't know how long that one's gonna last with all the teachers that are flooding out of Florida right now, though. I was reading a blog by this economist and he said that the real estate market in Florida is starting to be affected by all the problems they're having with teachers leaving and things like that. One of the worst things you could do for property values is having school problems, whether it's their bad schools or in this situation, teachers are flooding out of the state. They're ranked 28th in healthcare and 19th when it comes to crime. Now, the reason they're at number nine and not lower on this list is the opportunity score they have is they're ranked 46, meaning you can get a job. Don't expect it to be the best job and don't expect to be climbing any social ladders anytime soon. Number eight, Vermont. Living in Vermont is like a breath of fresh maple scented air. Talked to a lady on a train one time and she had the nice way of explaining why she loved living in Vermont. She said it was about embracing the simple joys of life, strolling through villages, wood burning stoves, and having a beer at a mountain tavern. I have to admit, it kind of sold me on the state. The pace is slow and the people tend to be as warm as that wood burning stove she spoke of. It's a great state for people that like to be outdoors. Winter, spring, summer, and fall, all of them, they have something for you to do in Vermont. It's not just a place either, it's kind of a state of mind that celebrates the good life in all its rustic glory. When you look at the rankings, 
Their economy is ranked 18th in the nation. Schools ranked 15th. Healthcare is 18th. Their crime is number three. One that really helps them get into the top 10 is their opportunity. They have the second best opportunity ranking in the country. Number seven, Wisconsin. Now I could see this one. I love Wisconsin. Wisconsin is a great state and it's not a bad place to live. From its stunning natural beauty of the North Woods to its bustling cities like Milwaukee and Madison, there's something here for everyone. You can't beat cheese curds and Friday fish fries. And of course, brats and beer. Man, those people in Wisconsin like their bratwurst. I, I don't know what it is. It's almost like Los Angeles and San Diego and tacos. And I guess New York and Chicago with pizza. There's an interesting question. Who has better pizza, Chicago or New York? I say Chicago. Let me know in the comment section below. But back to Wisconsin. Wisconsin is a great state to live. It's great for families. It's great for colleges. And you'll meet some of the friendliest people in the country in Wisconsin. Sure, they have their fair share of snow and winter weather, but it's still a great place to live. Ice skating, snowball fights, and in the summer, when the warm weather rolls around, you got all kinds of lakes for perfect swimming, boating, and just lazy days at the beach. And they got the Packers. Let's see how the Badger State ranks. For their economy, they're ranked 22nd, which isn't bad, middle of the road. Their schools, number six. Healthcare, number seven. Crime is 22. Their fiscal stability kind of gets them on this list a little bit higher. It's They're ranked seventh in the nation. That's not bad. Number six, Nebraska. Nebraska is a great state to live if you're not looking for skyscrapers. Yeah, they don't have really big cities. They got Omaha and Lincoln, and then everything else is pretty much a small city or small town. I said that once before and someone said, well, you've obviously never seen North Platte. I have seen North Platte. They only have 23,000 residents. Here's a good way to judge if your city is a big city or a small city or a big town or small town. If you run a marathon around the outskirts of town and some people are getting lapped twice, you don't live in a big city. But Nebraska is a great place to live if you like a quiet life. Even though it's a pretty flat state, it's got some amazing rivers, lakes, and sunsets over the Cornhusker State are not a bad thing to see. They're also big in barbecue here too. They kind of fly under the radar and they're often overlooked for the quality of barbecue that Nebraska has. They got some good barbecue. Let's look at their ranking. For economy, Nebraska is ranked 10th in the nation, which is not bad. They're ranked seventh in the nation for schools, 21st for healthcare, and 25th for crime. I was a little shocked with the crime rate too. For infrastructure, they're not doing bad. They're five. That's how they moved up the list this high. Number five, Minnesota. One of the only real bad things about Minnesota is they get some horrible winters. They're a lot like Wisconsin. They really only have one place that has a whole bunch of crime, which is the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul. But they have thousands of small towns that are ready for you to move in and be relatively safe. Once you get past the crime in Minneapolis, and the cold weather they have, it's a great state. They've got 10,000 lakes, which is their state motto, land of 10,000 lakes. In reality, I think they said there's close to 13,000. Either way, there's water everywhere here. If you like to boat, you like to fish, you like to swim, you're gonna find a place to do all that. Now I should clear something up. Minneapolis does have some crime. It's not doing great, but it's definitely not as bad as some of the other cities in the United States. Their total crime rate is only 133% above the national average. Detroit is 155% above the national average. Detroit's pretty scary because their property crime is so low, it's only like 50% above the national average. Their violent crime rate is 455% above the national average. Meaning nobody has anything worth stealing, but they're still hurting each other. St. Louis total crime rate is 200% above the national average. And I know some of you are gonna ask, Chicago's total crime rate is only 67% above the national average. The violent crime rate's only 143%. Everyone always brings that up. There's a lot of rumors and there's a lot of misconceptions about what's going on in Chicago. It's not as bad as you think it is. They do have the most murders, but they also have far more people than anyone else on the list. So like I said, even though Minneapolis has some crime, it's still safer than a lot of the other big cities, especially in this area. Minnesota's not a bad place to live, and they're number five on this list. Let's check out their rankings. For economy, they're ranked 11th. That's not bad. Schools, they're ranked 20th. Healthcare, they're ranked 11th. And crime, they're ranked 20th. They come in first place, though, for infrastructure and opportunity, they're number nine. That's why they're number five on this list. 
Number four, New Hampshire. New Hampshire and Vermont always show up on the same list. They're very similar and they're right next to each other. I think they should just erase that border between the two of them and call it one big state. But most New England states are going to be safe and their crime rates are always going to be low. Sadly, tonight in Maine, I'm recording this on the 25th of October, but there was a mass shooting in Maine. Funny thing about that, nothing's funny about it. Let me rephrase that. The strange thing about that, Maine has such a low crime rate, all the New England states do really, except for Connecticut, that it really won't affect their crime crime rate or it really won't move them out of the top five in the statistics world this is called an anomaly it doesn't happen in new england but new hampshire is another great place to live as long as you don't mind the snow these white mountains though offer some epic hiking and skiing and the lakes are perfect in the summer for swimming and kayaking it's new england so the communities are usually warm and friendly they're just like that new england and they don't have a sales tax, that's always good. So if you're into gorgeous landscapes, friendly faces, and saving some bucks, New Hampshire is the place to be. Their economy is ranked fourth in the nation, that is not bad. Schools are 18th, not the best. Healthcare is 14th, and their crime is number one. Their less important stats that we haven't been putting up here, but opportunity, they're ranked first in the nation. Number three, Idaho. Idaho is a very laid back lifestyle with study natural beauty and friendly folks as long as you're not from California. Like I've said before, if you move to Idaho and you're from California, tell people you just got out of prison before you tell them you just got out of California. They'll accept the prison thing a little bit better. But whether you're into hiking in the Sawtooth Mountains or skiing in the winter wonderland known as Sun Valley, or maybe you just wanna hang out and eat some potatoes, there's something for everyone in Idaho. It's it's been in the top 10 most moved to states for about seven years now. And I would say the last three or four, they've been in the number like one, two, or three. Here they are at number three for the best states for 2024. Even though there's been a pretty active migration towards Idaho over the last four or five years, they've still got a lot of open land and a lot of great places to live. Real estate's climbing a little bit, but it's still cheaper than most states on the West Coast. Technically, it's not on the West Coast, but it's considered a Pacific Northwest state, along with Oregon and Washington. All right, let's take a look at the rankings. For economy, Idaho is ranked number two in the nation. Not bad. Schools, 19, not the best, but that's still respectable. Healthcare, 14th, again, respectable. Crime, they're ranked eighth in the nation. Fiscal stability, they're ranked second as well. And their infrastructure's number 10. So they got pretty good stats all the way around. The only bad thing is their opportunity. They're ranked 29th in the nation. And that's still not even in the 40s or anything. Number two, Washington State. Living in Washington is pretty awesome, to be honest. A lot of people love it that I know that live there. Got lush forests, the majestic Cascade Mountains practically in your backyard. You got the ocean on the left side of the state. It's got its problems just like every place else. And trust me, there's a whole host of people that will dispute they're the number two spot in the comment section. I don't know what it is about these people in Washington, but they all say the same thing. And I'm starting to think it's the same person that just has multiple accounts. Cause they're always using the same words, same verbiage. I know plenty of people that love Washington. I often think about moving to Washington and it always shows up in the top five of any list about the best states to live in. When everything says this is a great place to live and then you just have a handful of people or just one person that says it's a horrible place, I'm thinking it's them. Washington, like every other state, does have some problems. That's one thing I think a lot of people forget. They're trying to compare a state versus perfection when they should be comparing it against other states. Nothing's perfect, but Washington's the second closest you're gonna get to perfection in this country in 2024. If you like coffee and friendly people, stay out of Seattle. If you just like coffee, go to Seattle. People in Seattle really aren't that friendly. They've actually have this reputation of being very cold to newcomers. The rest of the state is definitely not like that. Go to the Eastern part of Washington, you'll think you're in Iowa. The weather in Washington state gets a bad rap, but the mild summers and the beautiful crisp autumns more than make up for the rainy days that you'll see throughout the winter. Occasional snow here and there. And again, on the eastern side of Washington, there's not much rain and not much snow. Can get pretty crisp though. I like Washington. I think it's a great state and I think it's a great place to live, especially since they don't have a state income tax. That's always great. Here's their rankings. For economy, they're ranked ninth of the nation. Schools, 10th. Healthcare, 9th. And crime, 20th. Not great, but it's pretty good. Now here's their other stats. Fiscal stability, they're ranked fourth. Infrastructure, sixth. And natural environment, they're ranked second in the nation. Side note, they're tied with Oregon for natural environment. And don't worry, Oregon didn't make this list this year. Didn't even come close.
All right, before we get to number one, like promised, here are the ones that almost made the list. Iowa would have been number 11, South Dakota would have been number 12, and Colorado would have been number 13. Okay, if you're thinking about moving to one of these states, there is a link in the description box for Home and Money. They can get you in touch with a real estate agent anywhere in the country. It's a great website. You should check it out. All right, on to number one. And number one. Utah. That's right, the Beehive State makes it to number one. And it totally makes sense. There's a lot of good things going on in Utah. Utah has some of the best natural beauty in the country. A lot of people don't associate desert landscapes with beauty, which I think is a mistake. It's not my thing, but you still have to recognize that the desert is beautiful, and Utah is a perfect example of that. Now, the entire state of Utah is not just desert, but that is where you're going to find some of its best natural beauty. I mean, the national parks alone in Utah Utah should sell you on this. Capitol Reef National Park, Canyonlands National Park, Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. Of course, you got Bryce Canyon and Arches. And one of my favorites, Zion National Park. Utah is a state that's doing all the right things. They've got great people. And it's showing in the... Uh, Migration patterns. They're one of the most moved to states in the union right now, and it's been picking up steam, and I think it's gonna continue to pick up steam in the next handful of years. It got so bad that the governor of Utah sent a letter to the governor of California to tell him to stop sending people there. That's obviously a publicity stunt because California is not sending anyone anywhere. People are going on their own. And Utah is one of those states that sent a lot of people to California in the 1990s and early 2000s. So a lot of them are just coming back. All right, let's see their rankings. For economy, they're ranked number one. For healthcare, they're ranked number seven. Schools, number five. Crime, number four. Now, if you dig a little deeper, it's the number one state for jobs right now. And that's how Utah got to be number one. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.